Hey everybody, this is Russ Money, and well, I just finished Walking Dead Episode 1, A New Day, and Episode 2 is coming out, so I've got an itch to talk about what could be happening in the future parts. So let's begin with the story of Walking Dead Episode 1. In Walking Dead, you take control of Lee Everett, and well, what do we know about Lee? In the beginning, Lee's being hauled away to prison for the murder of a state senator who fooled around with Lee's wife. Things go pear shape and Lee is left handcuffed to the back of a tolled cop car. After climbing out and getting a taste of the zombie apocalypse firsthand, Lee staggers his way to find a seemingly abandoned house. Hello? I'm not an intruder. I'm one of them. After finding a walkie-talkie and having a close encounter with the undead, we meet Clementine. Did you kill it? I don't know. I think so. Sometimes they come back. With Clementine in tow, Lee runs into Sean Green. How about you help us clear the way and we'll take you and your daughter out of here and down to my family's farm. It should be safer there. I'm not her dad. I'm her babysitter. Her parents are out of town. And after helping Sean with some heavy lifting, or rather some heavy pushing, Sean takes Lee and Clem to his father's farm, which is housing another survivor family in the barn. Lee makes small talk with Sean's dad, Herschel, before ending the day only to be troubled by nightmares of his wife. Lee wakes up the next day to meet Kenny, Duck, and Katja, the other survivor family. Kenny comes off pretty friendly, offering Lee a ride to Macon, which happens to be his hometown. Sean and Duck get to work fortifying a fence to ward off the zombies, and Lee ends up helping them, and talking to Sean about what's going on. Afterwards, Lee offers Herschel some help in his barn, but ends up being grilled by him, well, depending on the player's choice of dialogue anyway. Their conversation is cut short when the tractor accidentally rolls over Sean's foot, this leading to his inevitable death. I'm okay, Pop. I'm okay. I can fix you, don't worry. We'll stitch you up. It, it almost... It almost got me, man. It, <laughs> Lee tried to save me. Herschel becomes furious at Kenny's action to save his own son and not help Lee save Sean whatsoever, telling him, and I quote, Get the fuck out of here! Lee, Clementine, Kenny, and his family head to Macon, but they're only there to be ambushed by zombies. Some survivors show up out of nowhere. These survivors have taken safety in the pharmacy that was owned by Lee's parents. This is where we meet Glenn, Doug, Carly, Lily, and Larry. A fight ensues with Larry over Duck being bitten, but it turns out he's alright. him up, there's no fight! After Larry has a heart attack, Lee is tasked with finding glycerol pills. After pushing a desk and caring for Clementine's boo-boo, Carly shows up. She explains she knew who Lee was and that he was charged with the murder of a state senator, but promised to keep quiet about it to the gang. Lee appreciates this. At least, I did. Thanks. Don't worry about it. After finding out that the door to the pills is locked, Glenn becomes pinned down after a botched supply run. Carly and Lee head out to rescue him. When Lee and Carly arrive, they find out Glenn had found a trapped survivor. After puzzling around and many stellar headshots with an ice pick, you meet a bitten girl. At this point, the player chooses to either give the gun to the bitten girl or not. I chose to. When Lee returns from his mission with his newly acquired fire axe, you get the keys to the pharmacy. Finally. But once you open the door, all hell breaks loose. Oh, no. Shit. With the alarm bells ring, hordes of zombies assault the pharmacy. It's too much for the gang, and you must choose to either save Carly or Doug. I chose Carly. After the group makes their escape, Lee talks it over with everyone of what just happened. Most of the folks support Lee, except Larry, but that guy can choke on a dick. Everything looks okay, 
until the power goes out. Now, the cool thing with Walking Dead is it's tailored to the way you play, making a story by the choices you make. Looking back, I have a few questions come up that kinda bug me, and it's really specific just to my playthrough. First, let's talk about Sean Green. Sean was one of the first characters I liked from the beginning, well, besides Clementine, well, we'll talk about her later. He was this kid that just saw some people that needed some help and, well, helped them without expecting anything in return. But when you come to the choice of Duck or Sean, I chose Sean. Why you might be asking? Well, think of it this way. The zombie outbreak just hit, and I understand it would be tragic if Duck was eaten by the zombies, but Sean is just so much more useful. Let's see. Sean saved at least Lee and Clem. Who's Duck saved? No one. Anywho, what really bugged me is whenever Lee told Sean about himself, the game reminds you that Sean is remembering this. Well, Sean dies. You can't stop it, no matter what. So what I'm really curious about, and this is all speculation, but what if Sean comes back from the dead and meets Lee as a zombie? What if he still remembers while being a zombie? I think that'd be really neat. I mean, of course, in my playthrough, he's going to remember me as the babysitter and a guy that shot a zombie in the face. Okay, and the second thing that's been bothering me is the whole Doug versus Carly thing. Doug is a geek, a techno whiz, and really an all-around nice guy. Carly? Well, she's hot and she has a gun. Okay, that's not the main reason I picked Carly over Doug, but here's why I did. Number one, Carly holds the gun. Even though that thing will probably get us into more trouble than it's worth, in the end, a gun over hand-to-hand -hand combat in the zombie apocalypse is going to be essential. Two, when you go out to save Glenn, Carly's got you back. Even though she doesn't want to give you the gun to the bitten girl, she does understand Lee's choice to do so. Or at least, she seemed like it when I told her to. Number three. Lee and Carly seem to have a better connection than Doug ever did. When you talk to Doug, you really don't get any real dialogue choices that show that Doug cares about Lee all that much. Though he does call him a nice guy before he dies. But with Carly, you form a relationship with her. Now, that's probably the pros of picking Carly, but with that do come some cons. Now, Doug was a master of gizmos. He memorized the universal remote control codes. Carly is just straight stupid when it comes to technology, though. My evidence being this. There are no batteries in this thing. What now? Do you know that there are no batteries in that thing? Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. No. Now, what worries me the most is since the electricity goes out at the end of episode one, am I going to be screwed since I didn't pick Doug to help me change a fuse in a fuse box? Seriously, Carly is dumb when it comes to radios apparently. Now, the last thing that's been bothering me, or at least I've been wondering about from Walking Dead, is Clementine. Do you think she's really going to be able to survive this whole ordeal? Well, when we meet Clementine, she's an adorable little girl with huge eyes, messy hair that's all hidden under an oversized baseball cap. Plus, she makes a lot of funny faces. But honestly, is she gonna survive? Will the game end up with her ending up dead? Or maybe will Lee be the hero and sacrifice himself to save Clementine? Man, I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited for episode 2. Well, that's what's been on my mind since I finished episode 1. I'm Russ Money, and you stay beautiful.